Good morning. I like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. And I certainly do thank you for tuning in. We are going to get right back into the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. We are now on take 37. And which chapter are we in? I will certainly let you know which chapter we're in. Now, you know it's the 911 chapter. Hmm. Mm hmm. Chapter 8 The Law. In quotation marks, 911. Now, let's go ahead and get into the book. Then there are drugs. Black men with addictive personalities find it difficult to live with this artificial stimulation. Wait a minute. That didn't sound right. Then the, I'm going to repeat that. I kind of went up a sentence, so just disregard that, that statement. Then there are drugs. Black men with addictive personalities find it difficult to live without this artificial stimulation. Black men on drugs will never give up the desire for drugs permanently by finding Jesus. Step programs are being shut away in rehab centers maintained on medication. They go through these programs over and over, and the programs are costly. Black men will only kick drugs when they take on a new idea about self. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to repeat that. Black men will only kick drugs when they take on a new idea about self. So it's not in a program. It's not costly. It's advising that black men will only kick drugs when they take on a new idea about self, knowledge of self. Hmm. Hmm. Let's keep going. The best ideal would be for them to return to their own religion and names and the real aims and purpose of their lives. Only by uh, complete rejection of their previous life and activities will they overcome. But after abandoning their former crime-ridden lifestyles, they must be offered something else to replace it with. An entire program for daily living and daily thinking. They must be given reasons and ways to monitor themselves without the great white father peering over their shoulder. Boy, what you looking at? Okay. They have to be motivated from within due to gaining a new value for their existence and a new purpose for their survival. Only one group has ever been able to rehabilitate black men of drugs and provide them with a successful, productive, masculine existence. Hmm. I wonder who it is. You want to read on and find out? All right. This was done by giving them some new information and training them in a value for self. The constant availability of cheap sources and odd mixes of mind alternating drugs available to black man right outside his door creates a serious problem for the black community and the black family. The HIV and AIDS threat has shoved the crack cocaine, heroin, ice, and amphetamine problem to the back burner. But black men in increasing numbers are opting for the quick fix. The easy thrill of consuming or selling drugs. Crack is such a low-grade, desperate high that wears off so fast that it keeps the user 
involved in perpetual activity to replenish his supply. Black men give up every civilized standard and value when they sink into the brutal cavern of crack cocaine. A cheap, low, class, short-lived high. Did you hear? A cheap, low, class, short-lived high. It is an accelerated artificial chemical dependency that remains uncontrollable and unreachable by rehab or detox. There is no methadone type substitute for crack. The rehab fail rate continues to be higher for crack than any other drug stimulant. Drug officials recognize the fertility of trying to get users off of a crack based on mounds of disappointing case studies. No solution has been found regarding what to do with crack addicts. Interest has dwindled. Black women complain that when their man gets out of jail or prison after doing a couple of years or more, they seem to want to talk about what happened while incarcerated for several months after their release. Apparently, this is part of the disengagement they come down. The come down, a subsiding of the pressure inherited in confinement. They must talk themselves out of the experience like confession to relieve themselves. They should be open and talk about anything that pains them. A bleak period of depression follows their release and others more accustomed to being institutionalize institutionalize excuse me speak of prison somewhat longingly overcrowding in prisons prevent any rehab any real rehab from occurring and budgets are directed toward bunks and food black men are reduced to a near animal level if held in segregation our solitary confinement too long. Hmm. Did you just hear that? I'm going to repeat it. Black men are reduced to a near animal level. If held in segregation, hmm, our solitary confinement too long. The longer he is in prison, the longer it takes for him to readjust to lightly monitored freedom. There is really no way for them to keep up socially, politically, or academically in prison. They are in a vacuum. But prison can be a place of reflection for a black man if he and if he does not have to constantly be on guard against physical attack from other inmates. It is a perf it is a period, excuse me. It is a period in his life when he can no longer de deny his failure to cope with daily living. They are remorseful or vindictive, swearing to walk a chalk line when they're released, or concentrate on how to improve their illegal activities. They often develop lifelong friendships with other black men who did time with them. And although discouraged from further association with other ex-offenders, they seek out contact when possible. The rules regarding disassociation are unreasonable, but enforced. They say that a victimized, they say they are victimized by police harassment, unwarranted shakedowns, brutality, agitation, and disrespect for their manhood by police officers on the street. They say they are roughed up or beaten and terrorized just for sometimes walking the streets. They say the police are against all black men and in beating or killing them. He goes against the legal system full force, but as soon as he gets busted, 
He then calls upon the same system for compassion while trying to find a loophole in the rules to exonerate him. Self. When this fails, he screams racism. If he succeeds at his crime, he says nothing and continues, but racism is his catch-all. In many parts of Africa, the laws broken in America that earn separation from society by jail would generate an immediate death sentence. Especially if the crime involved breaking the peace of another tribal member by violation of his God-given right to exist. Instant death as punishment for crime was a major deterrent. Of course, this was only done if the person was proven guilty on all counts undeniably. Swift death is merciful, but it is not profitable. Maintenance of prison is. Even the death sentence has not proven to be a deterrent to crime, and there are always more black men on death row than any other nationality. A death for a death among African American men would only serve to remove more able-bodied men because if 50,000 were killed, then 50,000 others would have to die. Areas in the far west, California, resemble Beirut war zones. Disaster areas where black men individually are in gangs stalk each other day and night. Yes, the black man feels powerless and helpless to do anything but talk about racism inherent in such occurrences. And he feels so helpless because he is waiting on some outside entity other than himself to produce a remedy for these situations. He keeps pleading with the government to do something about it. To intervene on his behalf and solve the problems the black man says they created. But it hasn't happened. Hmm. And it's not going to happen. What now? Does he just watch all this go down or does he get on the case? Hmm. Throwing a fit in form of a half-baked revolution against American society will not help. But the natives are getting restless again. War clouds are brewing and rumbling, can be heard penetrating the atmosphere of urban areas. Hmm. Now that does complete chapter eight. Yeah, we finished chapter eight. Uh, next, I'm going to just give you a little preview of what's coming up next. Chapter nine, religion. Hmm. Hmm. Just going to give you that one emoji and just, hmm. And with that, I certainly want you to be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Certainly peace and blessings be upon you and your family this day. So, peace to you from me on Poem Praise 2, and peace out, y'all.